Hello everyone, welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today we're going to follow our parallax scrolling series and talk about how we can create this kind of effect. So over here you can see that we have a rotated box and the moment I start scrolling down you'll notice that we have both a scrolling effect but also a translate effect on this box. So if I start scrolling you'll see that the box start rotating but also uh, it sort of translates a little bit and if I go up it will go back up and down, right? So this is a very cool effect. Basically yesterday the tutorials we walked through was um, let me just bring it up. Now you can see it. Uh, the tutorial that we talked about was basically how we can trigger some sort of an effect like an animation or a translation based on the scroll amount. So for example if I scroll down you'll see that after some point we will see our second animation and this is something that we define in our CSS as an animation, right? So basically based on the amount of uh, sort of a scroll we have, we trigger an animation on the objects that become viewable in our viewport, right? But today is different. Today we're going to control the amount of translation or transform that we want to have based on the amount of scroll that we have in the page, right? So some of the examples or Apple websites, for example, if you go to the iPhone section and the new iPhone, if I start scrolling down, you will see different sort of things that happen. For example, these two iPhones based on the amount of scroll that I have. So if I scroll down, um, this is not basically an animation in the CSS that is triggered, but also the translation that happened based on the amount of scroll. So for example, one cool effect is this one. If you look at it, now you will see this 3D box that rotates on x-axis and goes up and down based on the amount of scroll. So right now if I'm scrolling down you'll see this effect but if I scroll up you'll see that it goes back to its place. I quickly prototype this for example. Uh, there's this line over here. If I start scrolling down you will see that we have this cool effect and if I scroll up again you'll see that it goes back, right? I'm going to put the link to this as well and we're going to follow up on that when we start our tutorial series on how to use 3D and perspective in CSS. So without further ado, let's go ahead and create this cool effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kotus.com. I'm going to click on this icon over here and go to kotus.com and in the kotus.com I always go to the kotus online. If you haven't subscribed to my channel please go ahead and do. We're going to have so much, so many nice tutorials upcoming uh, in the near future. So for now I'm going to create a container in my HTML and then within the container I'm going to add a class, uh, a div with a class box. In my CSS I'm going to style this a little bit so I'm going to give it a width of 200 pixel height of 200 pixel, give it a border of something big like solid maybe blue violet so that we can have a different color. You can see that we have a little bit of a margin on the body. I'm going to get rid of it by setting the margin to be zero. Now what we want to do is to, to build this I'm going to set the position of this to be absolute. Right? So now the position is absolute. I'm going to set the top to be zero. Now I want to translate it on the Y axis 40 pixel down. So I'm going to say transform translate uh, Y and then 40 pixel. Now we have 40 pixel down and now I want to rotate it 40 degrees. So I'm just going to say rotate 40, sorry, 45 degrees. Now we have this. The second thing I want to do is to move this element by half of its diameter over here, right? And to be able to calculate it, it's simple math. So we get this, so basically this distance is uh, going to be, we have the width, we have the height. In order to calculate it, I'm going to bring up my calculator over here. So this is 200, this is 200, so it's going to be 200 by 200 and then uh, so basically width to the power of 2 plus height to the power of 2 which is also 200 by 200 so 
I can just add 40,000 here as well. So now we have 80,000 and now the diagonal or diameter over here is going to be, I'm going to click on this. So it's going to be 282. And now we're going to, we want to go half of it, right? So I'm just going to say left is going to be minus 282 divided by 2, which is going to be 141, right? So left is going to be 141 pixel. Now you can see that we pretty much see the half of this. So our layout is almost ready. Uh, the next thing I want to do, because right now we don't have that many elements in the page that makes the scrolling uh, visible, I'm going to set the height of the body to something really big so that we can actually start scrolling. You can see that we can now easily scroll down and up. The next thing I want to do is make sure the container that this box is the child of has a width, has, sorry, the height of 100%, right? So now you can see that everything is the same. Now going to our JavaScript, we need to add an event handler for the scroll, right? So I'm just going to say window add event listener. And then I will pass the scroll. And then for the second, I'm going to use arrow functions in ES6. Um, I'm going to assign a constant scroll top equals to window dot scroll y. So this is scroll y is going to show us the amount of the scroll that we have in the page. So initially it's going to be zero and then it's going to be added by some integer values, right? So now that we have this uh, value over here, I need to have a reference to this box in my JavaScript. So I'm going to create a constant box equals to document.query selector and then pass the class box. Now, as you can see in our CSS, we define some initial transformation, one for translate Y and one for rotate. We have to start our transformations from that value. So in my JavaScript, I'm going to define a value called initial translation for example which is 40 and then initial rotation which is 45 degrees that we defined in our css right so now here what i can do is basically say box.style.transform and i'm going to use the string literals in es6 which which uh, is basically two apostrophes so now apostrophes so now i'm going to copy this transform and come here and paste it over here so instead of 40 here i'm gonna use dollar sign and then bracket open bracket close and inside these brackets we're going to put our value so if i just put these values so we have initial translation and then we have initial rotation you will see that if i start scrolling down Let's see why nothing happens. Add event listener. This is correct. Scroll. And then we have our initial translation, which is uh, 40. And then initial. Basically, nothing happens because we are using the same transformation that we define in our CSS. Now, since we have the amount of a scroll that we have over here, I can simply just add those values, right? So plus scroll top. And also for the rotation, I can say plus scroll top, right? Let me save this prototype. Now, if I start scrolling, see what happens. And I'm going to scroll with a very, very little amount. You will see that we get this cool effect over here. And we are scrolling down, if you notice, right? Just like that. So now you can see that because we are adding this scroll amount to the translation, and also to the rotation, we're, we're always going to see our box at the same position, meaning that the amount of a scroll top increases. So if I go ahead and console log the scroll top here so that you can see the value. If I open our console over here, now if I start scrolling down, you'll see that the value just increases rapidly based on the amount that we have up until, you know, the last amount. So this is not exactly what I want. I want to make sure that when I scroll down, the amount of the amount of rotation is much less than the amount that we see over here. 
To be able to do that, the easiest way is to divide this amount of scroll top with some values. I'm going to put, for example, 30 over here. So now you will see that when I scroll down, the amount of scroll, the amount of rotation of the box is dramatically smaller, right? Obviously, the reason being that we divided the value of scroll top by a constant, which decreases the effect of the addition of this scroll top. We can do the same thing for the scroll for the translate as well. So if I for example divide it by you know two now you will see that when I scroll down it's not gonna stay at the same place because we are not adding the scroll top to the initial translate. We divide that value by two. So if I go ahead and add a little bit more one point uh, like a lesser value like 1.3 it's going to be a little bit faster so if you can see that when i'm scrolling down it actually has this pretty cool effect over here as you can see right if uh, this inspiration for this effect comes from uh, container.com which was a suggestion by one of our fans so you can see that they have this box over here and then if i scroll down you will see that this box basically scrolls all the way until the next page and if I scroll up it's going to come back in and that is pretty much the same effect that we have generated over here so yeah that was the easiest and fastest sort of parallax effect that you can do obviously based on the same technique you can create really cool sort of effects like the one that I showed previously um, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial uh, uh, we're going to continue tomorrow on uh, the next sort of scroll effect that we have, which is this one, which actually, when you scroll down, it scrolls, it moves with a different amount from the window. So stay tuned for the tutorial tomorrow and potentially by Sunday or Monday next week, we're going to finish and start building the same page, but really, really awesome parallax effects that you can imagine. So again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do and, uh, you know, put, put every questions that you have in the comment. Uh, one of the things I want to mention is if we go to youtube.com uh, in our channel, front end tips. For those of you who do not know, I usually post a lot of stuff in the community section uh, and one of the things we did was to add some sort of a board that uh, you can add your suggestions and also upvote on uh, other people's suggestions so then finally I'm gonna create a roadmap and then we can all together track what are the tutorials that got all uh, the, the biggest upvotes so for example these two right now create a 3d drop down menu and tutorials on tools to create design prototypes got the most vote so based on that i'm going to create a roadmap and then we all know the upcoming tutorials based on the amount of interest that you guys have so don't forget to go to this place and upvote or add your suggestions and let's make this channel the best front end channel on the web i wish you a great day and night and i'll see you next time have a good day and night and bye